Public Health and Board of Selectmen meeting for March 8th, 2022. I'm going to call it to order. Um, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, Allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So um, we have the minutes to our last <coughs> meeting on February 8th. I make a motion to accept the minutes as written. I second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Basha, community relations announcement. It's two pages full. <laughs> Announcements uh, for tonight. Nomination papers available in Charlton Town Clerk's office starting February 7th. They do back to Town Clerk no later than March 18th at 5 p.m. Uh, all that information is on our website, www.townofcharlton.net. Uh, there are still seats available. Uh, Charlton Town Election Day, Saturday, May 7th, from 8 to 8 p.m. at Heritage School. Uh, volunteers sought for Government Study Review Committee. The Board of Selectmen seeks residents to review the 2016 Government Study White Paper Report and report on progress made and further changes that should be considered. Those interested in serving on this committee should submit a talent bank form to Executive Assistant Mary Devlin at mary.devlin at townofcharlton.net. All that information also is on the website. There is one opening on the Council of, Ag of Aging. Anyone interested should submit a talent bank form found online to the Board of Selectment at 37 Main Street, Charlton, Mass, or email Mary Devlin at townofcharlton.net. Uh, library announcements. Uh, featured program and events. Uh, Thursday, March 24th at 6.30, uh, library is looking for you to join to learn all about raised bed gardening with Kate and Eric from Blackson Wally Veggie Gardens. This is going to be about how to build, fill, site, and plant um, the gardens. Featured resources. Did you know we carried a discount pass for Isabella Stewart Garden Museum? Each pass allows up to four people for $5 each. Um, it is such a beautiful place to visit at, time, at this time of the year. This pass is available to all library card holders. Mm. Visit our website, charltonlibrary.org, to view all of our events and offerings and to register for programs or get a library card. I just want to, there's a side note on that. I did visit the library, and I didn't know there is a whole room full of books of all different kinds and source, and this is all for the donation. So if everybody is looking for the books, old-fashioned way, uh, library has them, and you can get them for just a small donation. Dudley Charlton Educational Foundation announcements. The pitch tournament is postponed. We didn't have too, um, too much of the participation, weather and everything that's going on, but it will be postponed and to the further notice. 2022 grant cycle, this is important. So uh, Dudley Charlton Educational Foundation is now accepting the applications. Um, the flyer for that is on the DCF website. Uh, for, for, this is for all the educators and anybody who's interested in, in donating or is looking for a grant. Uh, Dudley Charlton Educational Foundation has the HERO program going on, which was a huge success for now. We had people that, um, that went to all the local schools and delivered the, the small little talk of appreciation to all the nurses that worked so hard through the COVID. We had a little, um, you know, uh, coffee mugs made and everybody was very happy about that. So there's this program going on and you can um, learn about it on the DCF uh, website. That's all I got. Okay. We'll move on to appointments and resignations. All right. First is an appointment for the treasurer collector administrative assistant position. Attaches a request from Lynn Dyer, human resource director recommending the board appoint Melissa Iozo as the Treasurer Collector Administrative Assistant. This position is a non-union position with a rate of $22.55 per hour for 38 hours a week with a start date of March 7, 2022. There are 25 applicants with um, interviews offered to 10. Two declined interviews and three that were interviewed were from Charlton. Ms. Iozo is the most qualified candidate and I'd recommend the board make the appointment. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Welcome, Melissa Ayozo. I'm, I'm assuming she probably started yesterday? Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. Welcome. Uh, appointments for the Government Study Committee. Attached are requests from Tom Sirius, Jerry Doble, and Jenny Costello, seeking to be appointed to the Government Study Committee. I'd recommend the board make the appointments. I actually read their applications and they're all very well qualified. Um, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All very in favor? Qualified. Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Passes. Next is for the Insurance Advisory Committee. Attached is a request from Finance Director Ashley Oberzet asking the board to appoint Donna Folio as the retiree to replace William Bedard as he, is, as he no longer wishes to sit on the board. I'd recommend the board make the appointment. Do you have a motion? So moved. Donna Second. certainly has a history in town. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Next is for Cultural Council. Attaches a request for from David Schiller, seeking to be appointed to the Cultural Council. The Cultural Council is recommending the board make the appointment, and I concur. The expiration <coughs> date for the appointment would be June 30th, 2023. Do I have a motion? Oh, yeah, I, yeah, move. I move. Yeah, so move. So no, so move. But, but my only question, he also checked off economic development. Was he hoping to get on that too, or? It's appears to be more. In so the right now, um, we will forward this to the Economic Development Commission for review, ensure that we actually have a open position, yeah, yes. and then uh, bring it back for recommendation. Yeah. Good. So we have a motion and a second. Yes. Yep. Um, all in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Next is an appointment to the Municipal Building Committee. Attaches a talent bank form from Adam Kelly, seeking to be appointed to the Municipal Building Committee. The Municipal Building Committee met and would recommend the board make the appointment. The term of appointment would be June 30th, 2022. I would recommend the board make that appointment. So moved. Second. Very, 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 very strong background. Aye. Steve? Aye. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> All right, last point. Uh, Old Home Bay Committee attaches a talent bank form from Bradford Howard, Janine Costello, and, and Janine Costello seeking to be appointed to the Old Home Day Committee. I recommend the board make the appointment. So moved. Uh, second, with pleasure. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> I guess somebody on that one. I love it. Um, All right. Now on she votes aye. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping ahead of myself here. I have, I have a question. So yep. would that be, a, I mean, I would like to meet all these people. Can it be in any shape, some shape or form possible for if we are appointing these people, for them to actually come in front of us? Um, I would like to meet those people. Okay. That's the opportunity I for think, us to meet I, them. I mean, I think right. that asking them to come, like we're, like we're here. We're very, very happy to always meet them. Maybe we can make it a point to visit one of their meetings or something and do it that way. Um, not uh, not everybody wants to sit in front of um, this <coughs> woman. <laughs> you know but I want other people to meet. Right. I want people to meet them. Well, we'll make it a point. We'll go visit everybody new. You and I. We'll go to all the meetings. We'll plan. Yeah. This is an this example. This, this month. is an example. <laughs> I'm very happy Just about this long if, list um, of people. Anybody from the town of Charlton wants to join any of our committees, you get a personal greeting from us. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, okay, now right. we move on to our resignations. Very good. So, um, first is from the Council on Aging. We've been notified by Elaine Materis, Director of the Council on Aging, that Joan Malinowski has resigned from the Council on Aging, effective February 9, 2022, for personal reasons. The board should accept her resignation. A letter thanking her for her service is in your signed folder. We have placed the opening on the town's website and Facebook page. All right, do we have a motion? I move. With sadness. So moved. So I, I'm <clears throat> going back. Did we pass over Bradford Howard? Nope. He was part of the um, Old Home Day Committee appointment list. So we did two, but what, what about the other things that he checked? There's two. What's that? There was, oh, oh, two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, but he checked off historical commission, 
and dam monitor as well. Yeah, right now we don't have openings for those two okay. positions. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yep. He seemed like a really good guy. I, I was talking to him at the old home day. Uh, meeting. Very okay. committed to so, giving back. So, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, chair votes aye. Um, unanimous, passes unanimously. Thank you for your service. All right, the next is a resignation from the highway department. Attaches a letter from Jake Hosgood resigning from the Highway Department effective February 22nd, 2022, due to accepting employment elsewhere. The board should accept his resignation and a letter thanking him for his services in your sign form. Do we have a motion? Yeah, so moved. I second. <laughs> All in favor? But it, um, for discussion, though, this seems, this seems to be one of these coming up every meeting from the Highway Department. Just for discussion. Lots of jobs out there right now. What's that? Lots of jobs out there right now. Yep. That could be a reason. Just just to note it. For the record, I they were all offered um, interviews. Yes. Um, extra interviews and we didn't get any information. Yep. As far as, as, far as I know anyways. Okay. One more resignation. Yeah, and the final resignation is from the Cultural Council. Attaches an email from Amalia Terrell resigning from the Cultural Council. The board should accept her resignation and a letter thanking her for her services in your sign folder. Um, do we have a motion? I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Steve. Aye. Aye. <laughs> she votes. I'm, I'm she votes aye. <laughs> Passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody, for your service, and welcome all of our um, new appointments. Okay, um, so we'll move on to new business. All right, the next, first one is the Charlton Lions Club. They have a request for a toll road. The Charlton Lions Club is requesting permission to hold a toll road in Charlton Center, the intersection of Main Street and Masonic Home Road, on Saturday, April 30th, 2022, from 9 a.m. to noon. The rain date being May 7th, 2022. This request was forwarded to Police Chief Dowd, who is in support of the toll booth contingent upon the following safety precautions. All volunteers must wear bright colored vests while soliciting donations. Orange traffic cones must be set out on Main Street and Masonic Home Road for a distance of not less than 50 feet on each representative way prior to reaching the toll station. A minimum of five traffic cones on each roadway should be put in place at a distance no greater than 10 feet apart. Signs warning voluntary toll booth ahead must be erected on both Masonic Home Road and Main Street, not less than 75 feet from the toll station, and no stopping of cars or impeding the flow of traffic in any way. Money raised from this event will be used for helping the community. I recommend the board approve this request. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye, passes unanimously. Okay, we have the transfer of common victual license to Family House of um, Pizza and Seafood. Just one second. No more searches. There we go. All right. So we have been notified by Keith Gervais, owner of family house of pizza and seafood that he has sold the business to St. Maria and St. Mina Inc. Rabe and Esprim manager. Attached is the re completed paperwork requesting transfer of ownership of the common victor license to St. Maria and St. Mina Inc. I would recommend the board approve the license as requested. Do we have a motion to approve the new license? I move to approve the license as requested. Second. Second. Uh, is, 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 there a, um, is there a Board of Health inspection or anything? That is, do we yeah, so the Board of Health licenses will have to be applied for separately. Okay. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Passes unanimously. Okay, we have a request for permit fee refund for Prunia Plumbing and Heating. Attaches a letter from Norman Prunier from Prunier Plum Plumbing and Heating asking the board to consider refunding his permit fees in the amount of $250 for 
for permitting and $150 or for plumbing and $150 for, for gas at a total of $375. Mr. Prunier was granted these permits on October 28, 2021, shortly after he suffered a back injury which left him unable to work and ultimately has forced him into retirement. No work or inspections were performed on the permits. New plumbing, a new plumbing company requested a new permit and was issued by the building department to perform the work. This, the building department has confirmed that Mr. Pruner did receive the permits but did not perform any work. Per the board's policy for inspectional services fee fine appeal, the applicant must file an appeal within 15 working days after the issuance of a fee or fee or fine. Mr. Pruner, unfortunately due to his injury, was unable to meet this deadline. I would ask the board to consider Mr. Prunier's request and allow the refund of $375 he is requesting. I, I, I move that we refund the money to Mr. Prunier for the fees. I second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Just say aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Table unanimously. Um, I think it's the fair thing to do. So. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, for medical reasons. Yep. Okay, and I think we, all we have left is the, um, we're closing the town meeting warrant. So tonight you're scheduled to close the annual town meeting warrant. Below is a list of articles for the board's consideration to be included in the warrant that have been submitted. Uh, article one would be elections. Article two, town reports. Article three, litigation. Article four, appropriation of funds for unpaid bills of a prior fiscal year. Article five, Inter intra departmental transfers for FY 2022. Uh, de Article 6, town budget. Article 7, water department budget, enterprise fund. Article 8, sewer department budget, enterprise fund. Article 9, capital items and related contracts. Article 10, transfer of funds to and from stabilization fund account. Article 11, cemetery of perpetual care. Article 12, uh, revolving funds. Article 13, uh, request from the from this Council on Aging for a loan authorization to acquire property at 107 Dresser Hill Road and improvements for the development of a senior center. Article 14, to adopt MGL Chapter 59, Section 5-4 to establish $1,000 as a minimum value of personal property subject to taxation. That's from the Board of Assessors. Article 15 um, was a request that was recently forwarded by Chairman Borowski to adopt MGL Chapter 40, Section 8J to formally establish a commission on disability in the town of Charlton. Article 16 is a request from the Animal Control Officer that anim for an Animal Control Bylaw Amendment. Essentially, this was a request to uh, increase the permit fees, but we may be looking also at, a, at transitioning that to a policy versus a bylaw. Um, Article 17 was the zoning bylaw amendments as been working on by the, by the planning board. Article 18 was a planning board amendment for zone change to property on trolley crossing. Article 19 is a, a zone change for a property on L. Stevens Road. And Article 20 is the town road acceptance of St. Mary's Way. And that one still has some outstanding issues to um, take care of, but um, we'll keep that on the warrant until it's too late for them to meet those requirements. So I'd recommend the board approve the draft list of articles as presented, close the annual town meeting warrant tonight. Is that one motion or two? Uh, <coughs> that could be one. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the draft list of articles and close the annual town meeting warrant tonight. Now remember, this can be modified. This just really is the formality. This is just a lineup, it right? Yeah, yeah. It, locks in, yeah, it locks in the articles that, so no more can be added unless the board votes to open the warrant back up. Uh, but at any time, the board can vote to strike any proposed article. Because there were a couple that we were waiting for. Yep. For a full group for discussion. Okay. I'd second that. Yeah. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
I too have all signed passes unanimously. Okay. Do we have any committee reports? No committee reports. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That's your committee. Yeah, that's so I, 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 I was thinking of other think committees. Been, <laughs> um, other than the old home day committee, have we? Uh, has it been any meetings? EDC had one. Yeah, do yeah that yeah. <coughs> so I, I didn't. I was down. I was that was downstairs at old home day with Andrew. Yeah. Somewhere. So our EDC had a meeting. So uh, um, they you may have seen we po posted out on the town social media page. We came up with a kind of like a one page white paper for the town as far as some of the economic development opportunities that are available in town that kind of, you know, just kind of like as a, as a handout to, to give to people who may be interested in developing in Charlton. Uh, we're, working, the, we're working on trying to come up with a separate dedicated page solely, dedic solely for economic development outside of just being a, a regular town page with you know, committees and reports to be Kind of a little bit more robust uh -huh. and some like, more would it have, information. Like, all the property for currently for sale in the town or something like that, like actually interactive and usable. What I think we'll have to try to do is find a way to link to an active database because trying to keep that list updated okay. may be a bit time consuming and will go stale pretty quickly. Especially so we have in the to like market. figure out a realtor that yeah you know, or some, some yeah like so that we're we're in development with that, but we they had a discussion with. Um, some interested or developers in town about potential zone changes that they want to bring bring to the table um, on properties in proximity to Route 20, and there's more of a discussion around the EDC being a uh, a supportive force as it goes through the process. Like a resource, like a resource for those businesses yep. per yep. se. So that that website will be linked from the town to the to the separate website. Yeah, so it'll, it'll be it'll be on the town's website, but it may just be it may link over to a different page. Yeah, it'll yeah. So they can go. There may be linked to the e permitting and all that. Yeah, yeah. sure. Trying to find the best way to do it. Oh I mean, yeah. It's the, yes. There's no there's no magic trial and error. Right? Yeah, trial and error. you got to move things around and figure out how they can mm. work best. No, we're so, so. pro business, so it's good. And then to when be. people start complaining, you know, you didn't do a good job. Exactly. <laughs> or at least they're paying um, attention. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't think there's much else going on with other. Um, so under um, Board of Selectmen Policy Review, the new federal grant policy and procedures. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually really a good, not good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very well so written. It was um, uh, it was something that was picked up by by our auditor. You know, especially going through in this. You know, when we were dealing with cares and stuff we were going off of really best practices that were out there but we didn't have a formal policy so now we want to make sure that we actually have a formal policy on the books Perfect. related to this That's good. and it's very well written so um good job ashley and i guess the auditors um so we have to vote to approve that yes do i have a motion to um uh, accept and approve the new policies and procedures surrounding federal grants so moved second all in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Passes unanimously. Um, so we don't we don't have goals and objectives this week. Um, um, I mean, do, just do the, then just updates as to what so I've been doing. Um, Project administrator report. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I know at least relative to that, I know well, one of the ones on here is. Uh, you know transparency and we have been working on rolling out the new budgeting software and we uh we pushed out kind of initial we've gotten a lot of the back end built into it and kind of pushed out initial budgets to the departments to try to work that internally so that way once we kind of get to a finalized version we'll be able to have a, that that new permitting software open and available online for people to to see you know prior year look backs and and how their money's spent. So, a little bit of an update as far as that that goal. Okay. I can go right into my my report if you want. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, as requested by uh, by Selectman Singer at the last meeting, just a quick update on the crumbling concrete. 
Um, so right now it's just kind of meandering its way through the uh, through the state legislature. Not much to really report on right now, but uh, essentially right now it's in com the Joint Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Agriculture. Uh, that was assigned back on March 29th of 2021. They did finally have a hearing on that bill on December 28th of 2021. And right now there's a reporting deadline from that committee of Thursday, March 31st. And that was just extended the other day, it was originally February 28th. So we'll see, uh, see if they just extend that or if it actually makes any, any movement. Um, as far as development, you guys may have noticed uh, there's some groundwork happening over at the Amazon facility, uh, also at the LNG facility uh, down on uh, Southbridge Road. So as these projects move forward, we're gonna be trying to provide most updated information that we have on the town's webpage. Uh, I know Amazon is gonna be sending me over regular reports to just put right out there and um, should be the same for the LNG facility. And we're, we're hoping that when the 241 Sturbridge Road project uh, finally moves forward, which it should soon, um, that we'll be able to provide those updates as well. Uh, we have the uh, small business grant program information session. That's going to be tomorrow night, at Cornerstone Bank, for anybody who's interested. I uh, just want to thank Cornerstone Bank and Sabrina Webb for uh, coordinating this event, hopefully, hoping for a good turnout, some good questions. Uh, so, the Stafford Street Corridor study. So, I did just get a, um, a first draft of the study back from uh, Vanessa Associates, who's really kind of who's looking of that the safety improvements that can uh, happen along that corridor. Some very interesting recommendations, and um, I'll invite him to a future meeting to kind of go through those. <coughs> um, but it was yeah. it was kind of, it was a, uh, say it has definitely not finalized some still some feedback to go back and forth but I found that you know some of the recommended upgrades of what could be done at um, you know the Center Depot in Stafford Street were, were very very interesting wow. so, okay uh, can, you, can you share that with sure. us if you, yeah, yeah um, I, I was waiting for, for it to be finalized I actually just got the report in um, on yesterday that had the final estimate or that had estimated cost totals of what some of the improvements may be so had some questions about a few things, so hopefully we can just clean them up. Yeah. But uh, what I'll just say, and <laughs> all right, there we go. <laughs> I'm, putting the, I'm putting the lights to sleep. Uh, <coughs> we're not moving around. Right we're, not, we're, not, we're not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are, what of the solutions that that they're looking at as far as Stafford Street and Center Depot Road? It is actually turning that into a roundabout. Huh. Hmm. So what the estimated price total would be, and what that design would be, you know, may still have a lot of development to go, but I think that's one solution that had, I, I'd never heard of for, for, that, for that intersection. It'd be inter interesting to see what it would actually look like. Okay. So. There oh. might be enough space there. <coughs> there's there, there's, there's, some, there's some, quite a bit of eminent domain in that one. Yeah, on those. But there is, every, I mean, there is, there is vacant area around it, and. Yeah. I'm not sure how much you actually have to take to make that work, but to oh. keep traffic moving. I mean, it only needs to be single Insane. lane. I mean, right. Yeah. Huh, interesting. So nice uh, really I did ask to see if he had any preliminary designs on that, and we'll, I'll, I'll have him here at a meeting, either virtually or in person, to kind of go through the findings. I mean, oh, I, as long as I can remember, since I was a little kid, that's been like the most dangerous oh, no, spot in Charlton oh, ever. Oh, we hear so. about it all the time. I mean, Roundabout is that is interesting. interesting. I, I guess if you were coming down the hill in the winter, you could still skid around the roundabout rather than stop at a light. <laughs> if they were behind that. At least then there wouldn't be anybody parked in the middle of the roundabout. So, one of the good, you know, one of the, the goals of this study really is is that if we can come up with some conceptual plans, that the next phase would essentially be to do a. Um, it would be to go to CMRPC and have them kind of uh, look at that, look at these findings again, and then be able to take that study and move it along to Mass DOT to get it on either get it onto the um, transportation improvement program or apply f 
uh, for mass works grant that could go into the design of these so a couple of different options to try to move but, but it would ultimately be their project not or, or, it's or, a town or, or, road but if it's a but because of the high crash volume it becomes a priority from the state level to okay, mitigate okay. that issue right, that's good good that's good. Good. Yeah. good that's good news Excellent. thanks andrew so shepherd hill uh you guys may have uh, heard too that they have um, been invited into the eligibility period for the msba for the mass school building authority for um, shepherd hill regional school the eligibility will or eligibility period will commence on September 1st, 2022, which will include a feasibility study to determine the appropriate course of action, whether or not that be renovation or new construction. And also um, they'll have to secure the appropriate funding mechanism to um, lock into the to lock into the program. So as I get more information, I'll provide it to you guys. But just as you know that now that they've been in invited into the program, there is going to be some Steps. some steps that they're going to have to comply with especially financial so you want to just at least have it on your radar <clears throat> that's not something even even for the exercise to go through the cost as far as it, it, that doesn't need to go on the town warrant right not it, for it, it, not, as far as the for study. this phase not for the spur not yeah. for the annual um if anything this would probably be something that'll have to be tackled at special town meeting in the fall so Again, tr I had some very preliminary conversations yeah. about time about timelines, so I'm, I'll wait until the school kind of gets their their house in order before I bring anything up. Yeah. That's that's a final course of action. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just finally, budget timeline. So um, the finance committee will be meeting on March 16th uh, with the school departments that it's going to be reviewing their requests, um, and I'm sure. The MSBA program will probably come up as part of that, uh, part of that meeting. Um, and then on March 30th, we'll be looking to provide um, budget recommendations to them for consideration. So right after that meeting, we'll have a draft budget to the Board of Selectmen for the week of April 4th. So pencil into your calendars to have a um, joint meeting of the boards on Wednesday, April 13th, so that way both boards can review the budget and make recommendations. And, uh, and recommendations on warrant articles. And that's what I got for today. Very good. So, far, that's a lot of so our next meeting will be on March 22nd, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. And if there's nothing else, we have a motion to close the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>